So in order to create our own workspace, we need to just reset a few of the options in here so that we are all working from the same starting point. I'll click on the word essentials at the top in the workspace, which are menu as it's called, and then go down the list to something called reset. And with it being the essentials workspace that's active, it's going to reset the essentials workspace when I click on it. And then it will make properties the priority visible panel on screen. So the options in here are what are called context sensitive. They will alter depending on what content you've got active in the document. So it's a great space saver. Pages are going to be really handy as well, um, but CC libraries, not at the moment. So I'm going to left click on the tab for CC libraries and then going to right click on that library name in there with the mouse and choose close to make it disappear. I want to be able to see the properties panel and the pages panel at the same time. Because they're going to be used on a very frequent basis, it's no good having one of them constantly hidden. So I'm going to hover my cursor over the word pages, click and hold down the left mouse button and drag this out from its current home and then out here in this open space and let go of the mouse button. Now that will turn it into a floating panel. In theory, if you wish to, you could use it like that. You could take your cursor to the dart bar across the top. You could drag that around and it would always float in front of your artwork, but it's sometimes it's quite handy to have the content you're editing next to the panel you're using to edit with. Now in my case, I want to drop this right underneath the properties panel. So to do this, I'm going to hover my cursor again over the word pages, click and hold down the left mouse button and drag this down to the very bottom right corner of the interface. Now it's almost going to feel like you're dragging that panel outside of the window. But when your cursor and the pointy end of your cursor reaches the very bottom edge of the interface, you'll see that the, a thick blue horizontal line will appear and the panel that you're dragging will turn see-through. At that point, let go of the mouse and that will what's called dock them in a column formation. So they're both constantly visible on screen and you can dive in and out of them without one of them being hidden. The other panel that we need is not visible on screen but it's definitely essential. So go to the window menu, the home of all panels and go down and click on layers. Left click on that and it will open up just at the side. Again, I'm going to hover my cursor over the word layers, click and drag and pull that out as a floaty panel. And then I don't need links just for the moment. So I'm going to click and drag and pull that one out as well. Have that as a floating panel. I'm then going to hover my cursor over the word layers for its tab, drag that this time right up to the top and you'll need to drag that so that the cursor icon is just above the word properties for its tab. Again, you'll see a thick horizontal blue line that indicates it's going to sandwich that just above properties. Let go of the mouse. And there's only a couple of items in here in this list. It tends to look like this constantly. So you can hover your cursor over the dividing line between two stacked panels. When your cursor changes to a double headed arrow, click and hold down the left mouse button and drag this up a little bit. We don't need that much room for the layers panel, but we definitely need lots of room for the properties panel. Now links is a panel that will allow you to modify and manage the images that you have inside of your InDesign document. We don't always need it. So you can hover your cursor over the links tab name, click and hold down the mouse and drag this across. But this time just immediately to the right hand side of the word properties. And this time you'll see a blue highlight appear around all of the properties panel. When you see that, let go of the mouse and it will dock them in a tabbed formation and then click back on properties to make that the priority panel that's visible on screen. The next panel we need to add is under the window menu and click on info to open up the info panel. It always appears in the middle of the screen so you can hover over the dark bar across the top. The info panel, as small as it is, includes some very important information such as character count and also tells you the quality of the images that you're using in your layout. It's not a panel that we need to see all the time. So I'm going to drag this just to the side of the pages panel again, so we can dock it in a tab to workflow. And then once it's been dropped in there, I'll click back on the pages tab to make that front and center. Now, for those of you working in an older version of InDesign, you might not have a properties panel. It's only been around for sort of two or three years now. Now, in that case, I would defer back to a panel that kind of came before it called the control panel, it offers many of the same functions as the properties panel, but you'll find it by going to the window menu and then choosing control. And that will appear as a long strip of options running across the entirety of the interface. And it does replicate many of the settings you'll find in the properties panel. With that now done, we need to save this as our own custom workspace. 
So head up to the word essentials, click on the drop down menu, and then head down to something called new workspace, which really ought to be called save new workspace. Click on that, we'll give it a name. I'm going to call this basic, and then you can click OK. And if I click on the word basic that we've just saved, all of your user created workspaces will appear at the top of this list in here. If the unthinkable happens and you have to move these panels around and drag them out and you have to juxtapose them in a way to be able to edit quicker, you can always go back up to the top, click on the workspace switcher menu and choose reset basic. It takes you back to the collection of panels where you know and you like them. So that's how to create your own workspace. And this collection of panels should give you just about everything you need for regular day-to-day -day work in InDesign.